Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Tech Tuesdays. I'm your host, Amy Arwardmark. By day, I'm a unicorn wrangler at Two Point Software. And by the way, unicorn wrangler is a real title. I know it because LinkedIn let me add it. So originally I was going to call this 20 Minute Tuesdays where I'd bring you 20 minutes of tech tips and tricks and shiny demos and really cool co-hosts, but I'm super lazy and I'm a really bad planner. So I'm not holding myself to any of those promises. Also, when I woke up this morning and I realized that it was Tuesday, I didn't think I'd have any luck getting a shiny co-host or coming up with any demos on a super short notice. Maybe I'll learn from this lesson, but in all honesty, I probably won't. Instead, I'm calling it Tech Tuesday, where I'll bring you news that you could probably read for yourself if you were into reading, but I know that you're not because you're here on YouTube with me. This is going to be a super fun time for all of us. I'm also going to mix in some poorly timed and probably not really funny humor. And you should also know that I'm reading from a set of pre-typed notes, so I really hope this looks as awkward to you as it feels to me. Let's get right into it. Housekeeping notes. In an effort to convince my boss that I'm actually working on work-related stuff and not just internet shopping all day long for my horse, I'm dedicating the first episode to Two Point. Last week, I spoke at the Ignite Tour in Amsterdam. I was joined by Andreas, who met up with us there. I also brought along my husband, Johan, and my son, Michael, because what other mom insists to have her kid get his first passport stamp in the weed capital of the world? This mom. I delivered a session called Planning for Modern Desktop Deployment, which is actually marketing code for, hey, come hear me talk about updating Windows and Office. I'm not going to re-deliver the whole session, uh, mostly in part because a lot of people didn't really like the session based on the reviews, but also because it would take way too long than what I really feel like talking on a Tuesday morning. So the main takeaway of the session is this. Number one, Windows 7 is end of life really, really soon. We all know that it's going out of service somewhat forever based on what you're reading and what announcements you're following um, in January of 2020. If you're new to the idea of Windows as a service, you'll want to Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo, which is basically Bing <laughs> from a different search provider, uh, to find out more information. You could look for Ignite sessions that cover Windows as a service or any other community-related session that's been pre-recorded that's available on demand for you. I really recommend getting an understanding of what Windows as a service means so that you understand why we're talking about the things that we're talking about. On the other hand, if this isn't new to you, this does not mean that you get to stop watching the video here. What this means is that you've been warned time and time again about the support timelines for the builds. And that's really what's important to understand at this point of the game. Sure, things have been adjusted as far as support timelines go, uh, things have been renamed as well to help clear up any confusion, but the bottom line is that Microsoft doesn't want any of us staying on any particular build for a significant amount of time. With that being said, the fall releases starting with 1809 are going to be supported for 30 months, and the spring releases starting with 1903 will be supported for 18 months. I know that we saw a little bit of change starting with 1511 and then it wrapped in all currently supported builds now that 1511 isn't being supported. First things were supported for 24 months and then 30 months, but what you really need to understand right now with 1903 coming rather soon is that the 03 build will be supported for 18 months, the 09 build will be supported for 30 months. I have no idea if Microsoft has any plans to change that any further maybe adjusting it to have the spring releases be the ones that are supported for 30 months and the fall for 18 months, or if they're just going to go for a single build per year. I really don't know. I don't have those answers for you. But what I recommend doing at this point in the game is really understanding the timelines and what that means for your organization. Another thing that I would really like to point out to help people understand as they start planning a shift to Windows 10 or start keeping Windows 10 up to date in their organization is that Windows and Office aren't the same team. Sure, you install Office on Windows, but other than that, you really need to understand the different timelines for both. So Windows dropped targeting, for example, and Office didn't. If you don't really know what that means, I've dropped a link in the description of the video so that you can read up on what that means for you and your organization. 
Also, office builds don't follow the 30 month timeline like the fall release of Windows. So you're likely going to be updating Office a whole lot more often than you're going to be updating Windows. And when I say updating Office and updating Windows, I mean the feature updates. Uh, those are the big things that you need to plan for in your organization. We still have the monthly cumulative updates, but that's a whole different thing that you have to understand. Config Manager and Intune for that matter are also as a service, but Config Manager you have to keep up to date yourself, whereas Intune is done on the back end, meaning that you don't have to do anything as an admin to update the Intune platform. On that note, in the session that I delivered, I misspoke and said that Config Manager gets four feature updates per year, where what I really meant to say was that Fig Man Config Manager gets three updates per year, but you also have your monthly and sometimes two times a month technical preview updates that you should be playing with as well. If you prefer to keep your infrastructure on-prem, Investigate implementing co-management. It's a feature in Config Manager that allows roaming computers to still be managed in a modern way, meaning that they can also connect back to your on-prem infrastructure for some policies. You could also use Intune to manage your devices for other policies. If you actually figure out how to implement co-management in just four clicks, please let me know. I'm an MVP and I haven't figured out how to do it in 100 clicks yet. A little bit behind. If you're full speed ahead from the cloud, then you'll want to be using Microsoft Intune for device management. There's a lot of really shiny features that get added to Intune every week, and you can follow uh, what's being added to Intune. I've dropped a link in the description for that as well. Also, something really important worth noting is that Windows Autopilot is not a replacement for OS deployment, but it sure makes it a heck of a lot easier to support re-imaging in a modern way. And if you followed Windows Autopilot from the beginning, then you'll know that the original scenario for Autopilot was to simplify UBI for end users and also bring new de devices under management that weren't imaged on the corporate network. But I think one of the most compelling scenarios for Windows Autopilot for existing devices is actually eliminating a break-fix scenario where a user has taken a laptop away from the corporate network because they're on an assignment or because they work from home or just don't work at a corporate office or at a location where you're doing imaging. The end user doesn't have to call the help desk and schedule a way to get their device shipped back um, to headquarters or to the imaging depot, meaning they're without a device for sometimes up to a week while the technician re-images the computer and sends it back to them. Um, it's a way to reset the device and still have it be under management when it boots up for the first time for the end user when they're out in the field. I think it's super shiny and it's definitely something that's worth looking into, not only for new devices, but existing devices. So moving on, you may have noticed that I'm wearing a Branch Cash Bob t-shirt, uh, mostly because I didn't or order any Doris shirts, but also because this is a sneak peek of the t-shirts that we'll be giving away at our booth at MMS in May. If you didn't sign up for MMS in May, it's too late now, it's already sold out. There may be a few vendors who are still giving away tickets for free, but I recommend instead signing up for the Jazz Edition which happens directly after Microsoft Ignite in November. The MMS Jazz Edition is in New Orleans. There's a link in the description for sign up for that as well. Two Point is the diamond sponsor for MMS this year for both the one in May as well as the Jazz Edition. And I think for a company that cringes at sales driven marketing, this is a really big thing for us. We will have an obligatory sponsor session, but we hope people will come to that sponsor session. We're going to promise to showcase um, free tools as well as the paid ones so that there's something in it for everybody. Uh, our two main pints, or our two pints, Andreas and Phil, also have regular non-sponsor sessions. So those will be some really shiny sessions that you can attend and get some technical tips for things that you need to understand for managing, deploying, servicing Windows 10, network impact, and tips and tricks for just being a really cool config manager admin. So with that, uh, my notes are about a thousand words, which I'm hoping is at least 10 minutes. Uh, hopefully I didn't bore you too much and I hope to see you for the next episode. Thanks for joining me and have a shiny Tuesday.